Right, so today I want to talk about three things that can happen to you in your physical health if you're involved with somebody that you know is a narcissist or you suspect is a is a toxic abusive relationship partner in some way. And this can this can be friendships, this can be business relationships. Most of the time it's romantic, most of the time it's marriage. Uh, marriage and romantic are not always the same, but you, you know what I mean. So these are these are three things to be on the lookout for and to be aware of. And chances are you've noticed, but you just kind of pass them by. Um, the first thing is is mental fatigue and fog. As crazy as that sounds, right? What happens when you're with somebody that is constantly rewriting reality, constantly changing the rules, constantly shifting expectations depending on who it is that that's expecting treatment? In other words, you know there's a standard that they expect for themselves. If they want to go somewhere to eat, for an example, you're probably going to go there. If they don't want to go to some family member's house, you're probably not going to go there. In other words, you have an understanding of what they expect once they've told you what they want. But if you tell them what you want, you also have an understanding that that's probably not going to mean as much. So it's a constant shift in expectation. It's being gaslit. It's being... Um, subtly lied to, sometimes blatantly lied to. Like they might say, why don't you put your phone down when I'm talking to you? Why don't you make me feel like you care what I'm saying? You're always on your phone, and it just makes me feel like I don't matter. And you think, fair enough, so you put your phone down. And then the next time, you're trying to tell them something, and they're maybe even, not only just on their phone, but they may have this look on their face like, ugh, you're just boring them, and when is this going to be over? Are you done yet? So when they do that, you're thinking, and you might say, well, hey, last time you told me that you wanted to make sure that I was listening to you, so I put my phone away. And instead of like, instead of like giving you a realistic, reasonable, balanced, honest answer, like, okay, fair enough, you're right, and then put the phone down, they'll flip it on you. Yeah, well, I said that because you never do, so why are you asking me to now? And suddenly it's flipped. You're asking them to honor what they just asked of you, but instead of acknowledging that's fair, They'll attack you on either end. Um, <clears throat> it could be that uh, you're just trying to make a valid point, and every time you make a valid point, based on past experience, they'll say, why do you bring up the past? See, I knew you could never forgive me. Why don't you just move past things? Why are you always trying to hold something over my head? That's why I can't trust you. Because if I ever admit I made a mistake, you won't let it go. But then every time they need to pull up a mistake you made to hurt you for it, to torture you for it, to lower your self-esteem and to degrade you. They'll bring up every painful past failure that you have, rub your face in it, and then if you don't welcome having your face rubbed in it, then you just don't want to face reality about the failure that you are. That kind of just mental torment. And when you can, even when you calmly, clearly articulate the problem, you know the response is never going to be an, acknowledge, an acknowledgement of what you're trying to say, even though you know it's the truth. So what that does is like, it's like having a, it's like having your computer with too many programs open. You ever hear your fan kick on? Just because you have too many things running, you're trying to monitor too many things. Your computer is trying to track too many things. You could have too many windows open. You could have too many tabs in a window. You could have a, it's like internet when you have a video game that that has a high frame rate. At the same time, you're trying to download something. At the same time, you're trying to stream something. At the same time, another person's trying to upload something. You get the idea. Your mental capacity is a capacity. It can only handle so much. And when you live in a relationship that is constantly shifting reality, constantly shifting the rules, constantly making it so that one side is the victim, one side is the hero, one side is the abuser, one side, and, it, and, it, and consistency has nothing to do with it. Principle has nothing to do with it. Balance, reason, fairness are all things that you know you can't apply. And you can, you can kind of start to predict what the response is going to be, not based, on, not based on equal treatment, but based on knowing the other person is going to have to win and you're going to have to apologize. In order to stay in the relationship, your brain is also constantly trying to justify the positions that you know are blatantly unfair. But nobody wants to walk around knowing that they're being played for a fool knowing that they're being treated like trash, uh, knowing that they're being disrespected. So instead of living with that reality, your mind will come up with reasons why you could have misunderstood, why they're probably being sincere, why they probably can't see what you can see, but they don't mean it that way. 
So you constantly try to articulate your arguments in a new way. You'll come up with a new example. You'll come up with a new metaphor. You'll come up with a new um, comparison of anything to try to make them understand that they don't seem to be able to understand. And you won't accept that they can see what they're doing. They just don't care because that hurts too much. So you keep thinking, oh, wait, this will do it. Okay, I have the perfect example. Oh, wait, I have the perfect illustration. I have the perfect metaphor. Here, I can draw it out on a, on a blackboard. I can show you exactly what's happening. But it doesn't matter. That leaves you emotionally devastated, and it leaves you mentally worn out. And that's part of the control process. Because sooner or later, either your belief in the truth will change your actions, or your consistent repeated actions and reactions will start to dictate what you see as truth. In other words, the more you justify and excuse their treatment of you, the more your mind won't be able to see that it's a problem. It won't be able to acknowledge it as a manipulation or as a poisonous, toxic relationship. Over time, your mind will just start to see it as truth, and you'll start to ignore that there are all these contradictions and conflicts with what they say is truth until you apply it to them. But in, while that's happening, that can take years. While that's happening, you'll find yourself exhausted. You'll find yourself, you'll go to take a breath to try to explain how you feel, and suddenly no words come out. And that's because your mind has realized, I need to save the energy. It's not going to matter what I say. And part of your conscious mind will think, no, but this is, this is how I feel. This is a really good point. I need to say it. And you open your mouth and you stay quiet. Because some deeper part of you has learned there's no point. So mental fatigue is one. Once that goes, your mental fatigue will affect you physically. So physically, once you get to that point, it saps you of motivation. When your mental energy is gone, it saps you of your motivation to do things. Because you don't really... Let me ask you this. <laughs> Why would you want to work out and extend your life when you're miserable? Why do you want to work out? Why do you want to take care of yourself? Why do you want to feel pride in how you look when you don't have any pride in who you are? Because the person you're with goes out of their way to find little ways and big ways and medium-sized ways to constantly teach you. You're not worth anything. You're going to find it hard to find some reason to wake up in the morning and to go to the gym and put yourself through pain so what you can look better and still feel like a, a discarded, unimportant person to the person that you're trying the hardest to love. It doesn't work. The other thing is mental depression. So it's not just fatigue. Once your motivation goes and your health starts to decline, a depression will sit in. And depression is not one of those things that sometimes you don't even know you're depressed. You just you just might realize that you're tired a lot and you'll realize that you don't really feel motivated to do anything. And you just feel more comfortable when you don't feel anything. Uh, that's when you're watching binge watching Netflix and you know there's nothing on you want to watch. So you find something that you hate the least. That's your entertainment. Because you're no longer looking for entertainment. You're looking for distraction. You're looking for a focus where you can put your mind so your mind doesn't have to constantly deflect and wrestle with problems that have no answer. Because there is no answer when you're in a relationship with one of these people. So before you know it, one domino is hit over the other domino, it's hit over another one, and, and you're, you're numb, you're unmotivated, you're physically tired because you're out of shape, and you're mentally worn out. And you find yourself looking forward to nothing. Because yesterday felt a lot like today, and tomorrow, you can already imagine, is going to be a lot like yesterday. And none of these days really hold the potential for what you would consider significant joy. You just want to get through them. It might be an event that you're looking forward to, but even when you get to that event, after you've had that event ruined enough times, because your partner will realize when you start to look forward to something and do their best to take that away from you. So if you find yourself in one of these loops, if any of this sounds familiar, and, and here's a big cue, if any of this sounds familiar and you think, I wish they knew how I felt about this. I wish they would watch this video. But then you know in your heart, 
even if they watch this video, nothing is going to change. Even if they heard me articulate exactly how you feel, and you say, this is exactly how I feel. If you know there's no chance, they're going to tell you I'm sorry, express remorse, and excitedly take steps so you don't feel this way anymore. If you know there's no chance, they're going to do that. But instead, they're going to blame you and get mad because you're trying to express the kind of pain you're in. You are without a doubt in a toxic, abusive, likely narcissistic relationship. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your time trying to convince them of what kind of a situation you're stuck in. Focus on getting yourself to accept the truth and take steps to get out. Because I promise you, if you stay in it long enough, your repeated reactions to mistreatment will eventually affect your ability to recognize it at all. It'll just feel like life. If what you believe to be truth doesn't affect your actions, then sooner or later, your repeated actions will affect what you see as truth. Don't let them rewire you. Get out while you can. Get over the pain. It'll hurt. You can get over pain. You can't get over being programmed and crippled. So I hope that's of use. Um, I wish somebody had been able to break through and teach me these things two years ago. But uh, if this is any use to you, please give me a like and subscribe and let me know what other videos you'd like to discuss. I've got some coming on ADHD and relationships and how you attract people like this. If you feel like you routinely, repeatedly pull abusers into your life for close relationships and business, friendship, romance, then chances are you do. And there's a reason why. And it's not because you're broken. It's just a dynamic, it's a principle that, that's just true about human interaction. It's not your fault, but it probably is true. So I'm working on that one now with some graphics to kind of help communicate those concepts. But uh, give me a like and a share or a comment if this is helpful at all. And thanks a lot. All right, bye-bye.